Hey guys, I just wanted to make this video. Um, I did a video on this amplifier about two years ago, and I think it was a video about um, the Fozzy T amp subwoofer amplifier, and what is the difference between that amplifier and um, this one. This is a full size um, subwoofer amplifier plate. So I just wanted to, you know, in this video, I just wanted to talk a little bit more about this uh, amplifier because I received a lot of comments about it and you know how to hook it up and how to use it and what type of drivers would actually um, that this amp can drive so I'm just going to talk a little bit more about it and hopefully you know I'll be able to explain everything about this amplifier just give you a full you know uh, full detail of it so I'm just going to start right now with um, just the controls but before I start, you know, I'm using a microphone setup. So the microphone is um, kind of right in front of me over the camera. So, uh, you know, sometimes my voice might pan in and out because I'm moving away from the mic as I talk or as I handle this amplifier. So just let you guys know about that. So hope the audio sounds good. Anyways, um, yeah, I, I talked about this amplifier and compared it to the Fozzy Subwoof amplifier two years ago. So I just want to, you know, just talk a little bit more about the controls and just give you complete details of how this amplifier works and how it performs. So I'm just going to go over the controls real quick. So basically this is a FREQ response. So this, this right here, this uh, knob actually lets you adjust the, the response of the subwoofer so it would blend in better with your satellite speakers. And to give you an example of that, I actually have a satellite speaker right here. See if you can see it. This is actually, uh, move this back a little bit. This is actually a Atlantic Technology satellite speaker. This is a 1200 series. And it has a four and a half inch woofer and a one inch soft dome tweeter. So basically, you know, um, it's a small speaker. It's a satellite, as you can see in the rear right here. It says satellite speaker 1200. So yeah, this is a type of speaker that you would use, you know, when you have your um, subwoofer amplifier hooked up. Because these speakers are so small, they are, are designed to go with a subwoofer because they cannot, you know, reproduce that um, low bass response. And I believe this speaker goes down to about, I know they have a smaller version of this that has a 4-inch driver and it goes down to 100 hertz or 100 cycles. I believe this one goes down to um, about 90 or it may be 100, I think. I think it's about, it's, it's either um, 80, 85 hertz. So this speaker goes down to about um, 85 hertz. So um, that's pretty low, but it's not low enough to be classified as a, you know, full range driver or full range speaker, which goes down anywhere from. 20 to 30 up to uh, 20,000 kilohertz. So this only goes down to about 85 hertz. So that means you're going to need to use a subwoofer with this driver to get the full bass response. And again, you know, uh, when you use these type of um, speakers with the subwoofer amplifier, this is where this uh, response comes in handy because this allows you to blend the subwoofer with the satellite speaker since this speaker goes only down to 85 hertz you will set the response right here as you can see it starts at 40 hertz and it goes all the way up to 180 hertz so that means it will basically work with any type of satellite speakers because most satellite speakers go down to anywhere from 100 or even as high as up to 200 hertz so um, this will work with just about any speaker so since this speaker goes down to 85 cycles you would set it to about right here which is about 90 cycles and by doing that it will blend the subwoofer driver with these satellite speakers so it would sound really full and the thing about this too uh, when you use this is the fact um, um, you know a lot of guys like to adjust the response really low and basically um, the lower you adjust it, um, the less you will hear it because any tones that are 40 hertz or under, you can't hear, you know, uh, with the normal ear, you can't hear it. You can only feel it. 
So um, basically with this speaker, you want to adjust it to, as I said before, to um, 90 and that would blend in perfect. And the thing is, um, the whole key is to using a subwoofer with a pair of um, satellite speakers is to make sure you can't hear the subwoofer or you can't find where the subwoofer is located at. It has to play low enough. So if you adjust this up any higher to around 100, well, I guess 120 or even 180, which is the max, you will be able to locate the subwoofer or you will be able to hear the sound that is, um, or the bass that is coming from the subwoofer. So you'll be able to find it. And, you know, in an audio world, that's something that you don't want to do. You want the subwoofer to blend in perfectly with your main speakers and not hear this, you know, this amp. So to do that, that's why you want to cross it over as low as possible, but you have to make sure you have the right speakers that can play low enough where you won't hear the subwoofer. So that's basically what this is for right here, the frequency response. Then you have the auto off and on power. So what this basically does is, um, of course, it cuts the subwoofer off. But if you want the subwoofer to come on automatically without, you know, have to turn it on every time when you use your speaker system or your home theater system, you will set it on auto. As you see, it has three settings, off, auto, and on. So you just set it on auto. And when it's on auto, this amplifier will actually shut off. And once this amplifier detects a audio signal, like a bass signal, the amplifier will automatically come on and it will start playing the low bass notes. So basically, that's what this is for. And it's a good feature to have, you know. Um... You know, you can leave this feature on and you don't have to worry about, you know, turning it on or turning it off or forgetting to cut it on when you want to, uh, you know, watch a movie or listen to your speaker system. When you set it on auto, once the signal is detected, it will automatically come on. And then once the signal is not playing or you decide to cut your um, system off, the signal would just cut off, I guess, uh, within one or two minutes and not using it so if there's no sound or no signal to this subwoofer amplifier for a couple of minutes it would just automatically shut off so you know that's a nice feature to have and if you just want to keep it on which i don't recommend you could just hit the on switch and it would just stay on until you physically cut it off but i like to keep it on auto because you know it cuts itself off when there's no signal detected so that's another nice feature you know with this amplifier and next you have is the gain control. Now this is, you know, really interesting. The gain control basically gives you the audio, uh, the volume of the subwoofer. And a lot of people like to set it halfway or higher, but I don't like to do that for the, uh, for the main fact that if you set this gain volume up too high, it um, you can actually hear the subwoofer. And what I mean by that, um, this amplifier just like most amplifiers, gives off a tone, an audible tone that you can hear. It's very low, but you can hear like a slight tone. So um, what I like to do is I like to set the gain about a third of the way up, about right here, right? And this allows the subwoofer, the vibrant subwoofer, to play low enough where you can't hear that buzz or that, that tone from the driver or from basically the amplifier being powered. And that's the thing with these amplifiers. You know, all amplifiers make some type of noise, right? And a lot of times you can't hear it, and it makes noise because of electronics that are in the amplifier. So th this is why you want one that has really a low noise, and this is why you want to reduce the gain down really low so you don't hear the, the electronic components buzzing, you know, inside the uh, cabinet here, inside the amplifier. Because you will hear a light hum. That's what I'm trying to say. You will hear a light hum if you turn the gain all the way up. So this is why I like to leave it at a third of a third of a volume and that will allow you to um, have cleaner sound and you won't hear that hum or you won't hear the amplifier running. So again, that's what I would recommend doing. Don't turn it up halfway or even, you know, or all the way because it's going to really put a loud hum to your system and you will hear it when you listen to your music or watch your movies. So, yeah, just keep it at a third volume and next is your um low level inputs you got your right and left which you know it's nothing really important about this the only thing is you know when you hook this up you just use the um 
the right has a right and left. You just use the um, right terminal right here where it says mono, and that allows you to plug this into your amplifier. And your amplifier has to have a subwoofer output. If it has a subwoofer output, this is uh, where it goes, plugs into this one. And a lot of people would tell you, um, you know, and you will see this online that you need to use a Y connector, RCA um, Y connector, so you can plug in both channels. But you don't need to. You just need to plug in one, and it works fine. You know, uh, the mono, which is the right or the red uh, terminal here. But um, you know, if you if your sub if your amplifier does not have a subwoofer um, output, and it's just a basic two-channel amplifier. This is where you can use um, these terminals right here. So basically what you can do, you could plug your amplifier, your rear, your, um, I'm sorry, your um, left and right channels of your stereo amplifier into this part right here where it says from amplifier. And then you take your speakers and instead of plugging those speakers into your amplifier, you plug them up into this amp. And this is where your, your two front speakers on main speakers go right here and this will allow you to use this amplifier if you don't have a subwoofer output on your um, stereo receiver or your integrated receiver if you don't have one you use these um, two terminals right here these two sets of terminals and that's about it for the controls and again you know um, this is just a 70 watt amplifier it's 70 watts at 4 ohms and 45 watts at 8 ohms. And let me tell you, um, they have another model. I, I forgot to tell the model number. This is actually the Dayton Audio SA70 amplifier. They have a SA100, I think, which is 100 watts. But this is the 70 watt version. And let me tell you, it's more than enough power. It could power an 8 inch woofer like nothing. Because I actually used the Dayton Audio dual voice coil subwoofer with this amp. And a woofer had a, a maximum rating of 160 watts, and there was no problem. You know, it actually this amplifier was a bit too much for that woofer, and I put it in a half a cubic foot box, vented with dual ports, and it really drove that 8 inch driver really hard, almost too hard. So yeah, 70 watts is more than enough for um, building a subwoofer cabinet, even if you are using an 8 inch driver. It's there may be a little bit too much for it, so it will work with a 10 inch driver or even a 12 inch driver, you know. And when using this amplifier right here, this plate, I would recommend making a large box for the simple fact um, if you make the box too small and you try to drive this much power into the uh, woofer, it's going to make it distort, it's going to be too much power. So, you want to make your cabinet larger. So it would take some of the um, power off for the driver or the woofer. So you have better control and better power handling. You know, because th again, this is a lot of power. It's only 70 watts, but it puts out enough, you know, where it's almost too much for an 8-inch driver. He was talking about, you know, he likes using these plain amplifiers that don't have a back to them. You know, where the electronics are just out. And that is good, but in a way, it's, it's really not. And, um... The reason why he don't like using them because it takes up the space when you have a back like this over the electronics it really takes up part of your volume in your closure in your cabinet but at the same time it really helps protect um your electronic components because what i realized is that um that when you use you know when you use electronic signals such as this that you know when an electronic signal goes to the woofer um you can't use any type of uh, magnetic or any type of steel, any type of metal that is magnetic because it will um, it will kind of, in a way, disturb the signal. It will basically um, not give you the cleanest sound with the signal if you're using any type of metal that is magnetic. And this is why, you know, they use copper wire or even brass or aluminum wire, which I don't recommend, but... They use any type of metal contacts and wire that is non non magnet magnetic. I'm sorry, uh, which is non magnetic, because if you have any type of materials or metals that are magnetic, um, 
it's going to really affect the um, the sound quality of your signal. It's just going to basically affect the signal. So you want to have the cleanest signal possible or the cleanest sound. You want to use parts that are made out of either brass, copper. Those are the two. I would recommend aluminum. And so this is why, you know, I don't know if this is made out of, um, you see, this is either tin or brass. But again, this is why they put the um, plate, this back cover on this plate to keep the electronic parts because there's a lot of steel parts you know underneath this plate and when you put the woofer the subwoofer driver next to these um, parts that are open um, you know the driver has a very large magnet so you get a lot of um, uh, I'm trying to think what you call it magnetic um, the magnetic fields that's what I was trying to say um, they put this cover over the subwoofer plate to protect the electronic components, the metal that's in here from the magnet of the loudspeaker. Because the magnet gives off a lot of magnetic, you know, fields. And it interferes with the electronics in this amplifier. You may not be able to hear it, but um, it does. It affects it in, in a way. It affects the signal. So this is why they put a back cover on this um, amplifier to protect, to help, basically to help shield the uh the magnetic field from the driver to the electronics but you know th again this is a plastic cover it's not steel I'm, uh, well it's not metal so um it might help a little bit it helps a little bit but it's not going to totally shield it but again you know if you're using a driver that has a large magnet you want to keep the magnet basically away from this part and this is why they put the cover on here for that reason so i guess that's about it uh, about this amplifier again this amplifier weighs about uh, i think it's 7.5 pounds and it's the sa70 by danon audio and you know you can get it at part express but again i've been using this amplifier for you know for a while now and it performs very well works great and i like having these two main controls you know you have a gain control to adjust the volume of your sub woofer and he also has a response so you can control how your uh, subwoofer speakers would blend in. So if you have big speakers, you could, you know, you could really adjust this very low down to maybe 40 or, or, or 60 hertz. But if you have small speakers like this, which only go down to 100 hertz, you want to adjust it to 100 or, you know, or um, 110, like that. So that's basically it. I hope I explained everything about the subwoofer amplifier. And this time I just took my time, you know, trying to talk about everything about it. So that's pretty much it. There's nothing else really to say about it. I'll show you the back view real quick. But yeah, you got your two terminals for your uh, woofer or your subwoofer driver right here. And again, that's pretty much it. So yeah, you know, this is a great amplifier for a 10 inch, 8 inch woofer. Uh, just make sure, you know, I would like to put it in a, you know, a large cabinet, a cabinet that's like a cubic foot in size or at least three quarters, you know, 0.75 cubic feet or just a full cubic foot with an eight inch or 10 inch driver and it will perform very well and sound great. So I hope you enjoyed this video and, you know, I might make another video um, talking about what drivers to use for this, um, you know, for this amplifier. So I hope you enjoyed it and... Take care. See you guys later. Goodbye.